Alright. So it's been a while, but I'm starting off exactly where I left off. This is from May 31st through June 6th, what's sold on eBay. The first thing up is I actually had this one previously, so last week it sold for 190 It was on a, an auction, but the guy didn't pay. So another downside of doing auctions. Uh, in any event, this one sold for 150 It is a large collection of Ben 10 action figures. You should definitely know Ben 10. Uh, they, for some reason, I don't know if there's just a limited amount. I really don't understand it. I happened across them a few years ago. I sold one of them for, I don't know, I, I don't really remember. I know that I sold it for a good decent amount of money. So now whenever I see them, I just pick them up. I was in Goodwill about a week ago from when this sold. And I saw like four or five bags just full of the characters and each bag was like $2.99. So I bought them all, came home, put them up. <clears throat> they sold for 150 Next up, we have a antique 14 karat gold uh, tie tack. Tie tacks don't sell very well, but uh, sometimes you do get a buyer. Uh, this one sold for $65. Next up, I've had a bunch of offers on this one. This is a sterling silver choker necklace, but it has a bunch of little stars on it. This one sold for 25 bucks. Next, something I buy all the time, and it has no bearing on the fact that I'm wearing a camo hat, but it is a uh, vintage duck decoys. Uh, vintage duck decoys, they, they sell all the time. Some of them sell for good money, some of them don't. This one sold for 40 bucks. Next up, we have a multicolored gemstone necklace made by Bars, B-A-R-S-E. Uh, this one sold for $35. I actually have, I think I have three of these up right now. Actually, I think I had three of them. This is, this would make, I have two left. Um, next up, we have a vintage articulating fish charm. It's like a little gold charm. I think, I don't know if it was last week or later in this week. I sold another articulating charm, but the other ones were a lot more. This one sold for $15.40. Next up, we have a vintage Korean brass bowl, like incense burner or ashtray. Uh, it's just a just a brass little ashtray type deal or you know offering plate. Uh, this one, I when I bought these, I bought I think it was like I don't know maybe ten of them. It was this one, and then there were some other ones that had lids on them, and I've had them for maybe about a year now, and you know, every so often one of them sells. This one sold for $25. So the beginning I told you why, the first that I don't like doing auctions, but I recently came across that crazy lamp lady who seems to do auctions all the time. And I think I've come to the conclusion that the reason this works for her is that it is part of her business plan to do YouTube videos, and that kind of draws in her audience who then see what they have on there and they go on there and buy it. Which, you know, hey, that's awesome. So if you guys wanna start buying things, it'd be great too. But uh, this I put up for auction. I've had it for a few years now. It was uh, four pounds of Legos, just crappy Legos. And it was just nothing really special in them. Although it did have some minifigures that if I probably went through them, I probably would have done a ton better. But I put this up for 99 cents starting, and it sold for $3.25. Whew, that hurts. Next up is another, uh, so I did a few of these different uh, auctions. This next one was a Life is Good hat. These used to sell very well. Uh, Life is Good, I've had you know t-shirts. I used to buy t-shirts maybe six years ago. Um, but this one I've had for a long time. Actually, let me just look really quick here. This one I have had since, oh no, it won't tell me because I ended that this is the auction. Okay, in any event, I've had this one for at least four, four years, five years, somewhere around there. Uh, I put it for auction 99 cents. It got two bids, I believe, because it sold for a dollar oh four. This is just, this is me preaching to you, do not do auctions. It's absolutely horrible. Um, next up, we have a small vintage 14 karat gold uh, single earring so just one earring uh, it does have some diamonds in it but the, the they're just small um, you know diamonds sound good especially when you go to the jeweler 
and you cough up three grand for an engagement ring only to turn around and see it being sold two months later for 600 bucks. And that's even, you know, that's not even, the, the scrap price is way under that. So diamonds, you, you know, don't, whatever you do, if you're watching this, do not buy from a jewelry store. It's an absolute ripoff. The markup is like at least 50 times the value of whatever you're buying. Um, so in any event, this is one gram of gold uh, and it sold for $39.90. Next up, we have Michael Negrin. It's a green necklace with a bunch of little crystals in it. This one sold for $43. So a single gold earring sold for $39 and a Michael Negrin necklace uh, sold for $43. So the name of the game on eBay is a lot of people don't really have confidence in buying gold and silver. I understand it. I get it. Uh, if you don't know what you're doing, it seems like it's be very easy to get ripped off. But if you're selling, you're going to be able to find costume jewelry, or you know, not like. Actually, you're not going to be like finding Pandora or um, Tiffany for all that much under what you're going to be paying for here. Or you know, sell it for it here. But if you find like random designer things, look up the name, look up the tag. You'll be able to find stuff that that sells. And you know, I probably got this necklace for 99 cents, so 43 bucks. Next up, I used to buy these all the time. I still do whenever I find them. I don't find them as much. But this is an antique solid brass door knocker. It's uh, with a lion on it. This one sold for 80 dollars. Next up, we have an acrylic lucite coin paperweight. It's got uh, Canadian pennies in there. And this one sold for 15 bucks. I've actually been thinking about doing this myself because I sell a ton of lucite and acrylic paperweights. Simply making a few myself and seeing what happens. But that's for another video. So we have a Brighton silver cross bracelet. Brighton used to sell very well. It still sells sometimes, but it has a it has this weird thing where it tarnishes because it's silver, but it tarnishes weirdly, so it doesn't really come off very easy, especially if it's been sitting for a while. But this one, uh, being not so tarnished, it ended up selling for 23 bucks. Next, we have a bunch of crab forks, some silver plate crab forks, I believe these were. And there was a set, I don't know if this is one, two, three, four, and these sold for 12 bucks. That's $3 a piece when I pay 10 cents a piece for them. So that's, that's good stuff right there. Next up, we have a vintage Trafari. Now, when I was even up to like four years ago, I would see Trifari and I used to you know, I'd buy vases of jewelry. I'd see it and I'd toss it in a, bed, a box and I'd sell it in lots. Um, that was a big mistake because Trifari, especially if you do, you know, you date out the, the little marks on there, can sell for big money. Um, I mean, I sold a brooch this past this past year for a hundred some odd dollars from Trifari. Um, but this one here uh, is a necklace. It's uh, got little faux pearls around it. And this one sold in less than, I think it was less than a day, and it sold for 60 bucks. Next up, we have another acrylic paperweight. This one actually has a little seahorse in it. That's a little, uh, it's fucked up if you ask me. But uh, I'm not going to be, if I make these, I will not be putting any animals into them. Um, <clears throat> but this one sold for $21. Next up, we have a Rogers, WM Rogers Silver Plate Cold Meat Fork. Uh, this one was in good condition and it's single piece again I buy these for 10 cents a piece and this one sold for ten dollars and forty nine cents All right next up we have a vintage 10 karat white gold onyx and diamond and uh, accent Ring this one sold for a hundred dollars and the cool thing about this one is that after she received it She ended up sending me an email saying how she had one just like this she ended up losing it or it sold or something. I, I don't really remember the story. She was really regretful that whatever happened, happened. And she was very thankful that she was able to find it again, which is always cool. You will get these emails and it actually makes you feel as though what you're doing is not just selling junk into the ether. It's, you know, you put these things up there that people used to have and they want to find it again. And it'll be like, you're the only person with that one thing that they want. And they'll, you know, they'll be very appreciative and thank you. And it's it's a really cool feeling to get those messages later on. Okay, so in any event, that one sold for 100 bucks. Next up, we have a vintage 
match safe. So this would be on a wall and people would put matches in there and they'd come in and they'd take their candle out of a candle box, strike it, light the candle, and that was the good old days. That's no longer existing. That was before my time, before any of your guys' time, I am positive. But in any event, this one, it was vintage, but it was not, I don't believe that it was all that old, but it sold for $20.15. Next up, we have a vintage sterling silver Georgetown pendant necklace. This one sold for $11. I've had it for quite some time, maybe four years now. Thankful that it is now gone. I thought it would sell a lot quicker than it did, but it did not. So it is what it is. Speaking of things that I wish I didn't price so low would be this antique rhinestone necklace. For some reason, I don't know why, no one wanted this one. Although it is really nice. Hopefully you guys can take a look and see. But I don't know why I had it up so low. It sold for $11.02. Speaking of things that are really low, this is another one. This is a vintage, uh, it's like a little car uh, pencil sharpener. This one though is a Ford. It's an old Ford pencil sharpener, metal. Sold for four bucks. Had it for a long time. Glad to see that it is gone. Next up, we have a vintage uh, elephant bookend. I'm sure that you've seen these before. I do sell a ton of bookends. It's just something that I pick up whenever I find them. A lot of us people that like to read, myself included, we'd like to have a place to display our book collections. One of my favorite pieces I've ever had was, uh, was a bookend, but it was it was the guy, that, the thinking man, where he's sitting on a, a pile of books and he's thinking like this, but this one, instead of being just like a guy, it was a skeleton. And I forget who made it, but it was really cool, and I kind of actually wish that I had that one still. Um, but in any event, this is a vintage bookend, brass. There was only one of them, I believe, and it sold for $25, which is not bad for a single bookend. Next up, we have a set, three of them, Fiesta Wear, but these were not old. These were more of a modern Fiesta Wear. Uh, the older ones can get some good money, but uh, they've kind of fallen off. It's kind of like with everything. There's, there used to be such a, it used to be very hard for people to find them, but then eBay comes along and more and more people start doing this same thing and the market gets saturated. But in any event, these are more modern. They only sold for $12.90. Next up, we have a uh, vintage pewter uh, candle snuffer. It was weird because generally candle snuffers have a, uh, like a stick that goes along them so you can take it and do the candle without burning yourself. This one does not, it only has a little handle. That was uh, a Florida Lee, I believe. Yes, Florida Lee, and you would snuff it like that. Really kind of cool, sold for $15. Next up, we have a new era Chicago Bulls hat, and that sold for $6.80. Next up, we have a vintage hat that uh, I would actually really love to know the story of whoever bought this hat. I actually think it's kind of cool. I just don't know anyone with his name. Uh, the hat says, uh, anyone but Edgar, which is, <laughs> I would, I'd really love to know who bought this and the story behind that. It's kind of, that'd be kind of funny. I can only imagine. Um, this one sold for $6.72. Next up, we have a vintage, uh, some butter knives. These had uh, mother of pearl handles. Uh, the sterling piece was like a little, uh, I think it's like, how do I describe that? It's not like a bezel, but it's like holds the handle on. In any event, there was a little set of them. These sold for $30. Next, we have a vintage Navajo sterling silver cuff bracelet. Uh, I buy these whenever I can. Generally, I pay scrap prices for them. But again, if you're paying five bucks, it's not that bad of a deal. They'll sit, but they will sell. Uh, especially if it's marked by anyone that you can figure out. There's a good website. If you just go to Google, type in Native American Hallmarks, it'll bring you up to a uh, site and it'll go through. And it literally gives you just whatever the, the starting letter is. And then you just go through there. You, there's all the pictures that are relevant to it. And you'll be able to find who makes it, generally. Um, yeah, if it, you know, sometimes you just won't. You know, I think there's a few last few weeks ago that I just couldn't find some like IC or something like that. I don't know. But in any event, this is a strong silver cuff bracelet and it sold for $32. Next up, we have a 12 karat gold filled Imperial Pearl Syndicate necklace. This is a, it's a cute necklace. It's, uh, you know, it's gold. It's got the faux, faux pearls on there. And 
it sold for 22 bucks. All right, so we only have two more. And this next one, I actually, so this sold on June 6th. Today is June 26th, right? And I just got a message yesterday saying that for some reason it went to Canada and for some reason the customs agent refused to accept the delivery. I don't know why, I called eBay. They tried to give me some nonsense about, you know, it, they don't they don't really know either. They don't know if it's the name or, or what the reason is, but they could not accept it into the country. So it's being returned to me, which sucks because now the person contacted me saying she would like it marked as a gift and, uh, and lowering the price to $10. I told her I cannot do that because it requires to be insured because it's sold for 215 bucks plus shipping, bringing the total to 254. Because it's such a high dollar amount, I can't send that. And also, if you do have people asking you to mark as a gift, do not do that. I don't know what the ramifications are if you are to get caught, but it's not something that you want to do. That is called customs fraud, I believe. Uh, but do not do that. That is not something that you want to do. You do not, I'm sure that there is some sort of a fine that you're hit with. And it is just, this is your business, okay? If this is your business, take it seriously. Follow the rules. If you're not going to follow the rules, you're going to end up getting screwed. And then you're going to be sitting there going, why is, you know, woe is me when all you had to do was, I'm not saying that you can't like, you can't fudge, you know, fudge things around in certain areas, but you definitely do not want to be making any sort of problems with importing things. I mean, it is, it is, it is not something you want to do. Um, but in any event, I told her that I could not change the price. She said, okay, just, you know, shipping. Um, I would like to charge her again. I probably won't because I did make some money on this one. But in any event, this is a Michael Anthony 14 karat yellow gold uh, globe necklace. Uh, and this one sold for $215 plus shipping, bring it to $254. Uh, I'll let you know how this whole thing works out in the coming videos, but it's still got to get returned to me. And then I will have to ship it out and see what happens. Um, that is kind of a pain in the ass for everyone involved, but it is what it is. Next up, we have a 1992 Batman Robin figure and this one sold for 664 All right guys, sorry that there's been such a long gap in between videos. I will try to get another one going pretty quickly uh, Any event thanks for joining me and I'll see you next week